NVIDIA gets a Linux dude, Qualcomm is getting a Lenovo dude, and Intel is getting a 500 watt CPU dude. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm Rupert Host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, April 19th, 2024. And we're going to start off today talking about a thing that could either be great or horrible for Linux people, which is one of the former leads of an NVIDIA open source driver over on Linux has now joined the company. Mr. Ben Skeggs used to work for Red Hat and now works for NVIDIA. He removed himself from the NVIDIA Nouveau driver setup last September and now has published a massive 156 patches to the driver, but under his new sign of being an official employee of NVIDIA. Now, this is not clear what this is going to mean. Either they got a big head of a project so that they could have him stop working on it and then they can just kind of push it under the rug and this is the last thing he's ever allowed to do for and it's gonna be really bad. Or this could show that NVIDIA actually does have more investment in the open source and Linux communities that they have been ignoring for quite some time. So this can either be amazing or this could be spelled the death of them just trying to buy out people to to make sure that they don't do the things that they don't want them to do i don't know which one it's going to be only time will tell us and elgato is telling us that they have a new family lineup of products kyler you want to come see this I may have seen it, but I will get it again. Elgato announcing their Neo lineup of hardware, which is essentially everything they've already come out with, but in more sleek, millennial, gray, white aesthetic. It looked like from Wally. -E. It does kind of look like Eva. I don't like the light. It looks like a makeup mirror? No, you know what it looks like is the white version of those things that they used to hand out in restaurants that would light up whenever you're about to get your table ready. A little bit. Okay, yeah, like a little mm -hmm. the buzzer thing. But it has a camera mount on it. <laughs> <laughs> Elgato coming out with a, a mic that has tap to mute. Uh, it's also a capture card that for some reason you need to look different. And then a uh, face cam and you can put it all together and that's what you get. Is it just the fa same face cam? No, it's a face cam Neo and I. it's not even available yet. I don't know if it's exactly the same as the face cam, but it... It looks smaller and not as deep as the regular yeah. face cam. Like it looks like a normal dumb webcam. I hate really unsmart webcams that mm. don't have Netflix attached to it. Mm. I do want that stream deck though. That is a cute stream deck, yeah. <laughs> you know you know who really wants this though? Reese! Yeah, he oh, wants it's gonna give is us that the deal. Reese? <laughs> Yo, welcome back to YFT Deals, bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well and hey. We've got some deals for you today, which is kind of cool because, you know, that's the whole point of the segment. But first up, we have the Seasonic Focus V3 GX 750, which is a 750 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply for only $89.99, making it $40 off. But don't forget, you can get an extra 12% off if you use code ZIPGAME when paying through Zip. Then next up, we have this EK Waterblock 360 millimeter AIO V2 CPU liquid cooler for also only $89.99 when using the promo code, making it $30 off. And then lastly, we have the SteelSeries Arctis Nova 7X Y wireless headphones, specifically the Xbox edition, going for only $119.99, making it $59.76 off. And don't worry, just because it says Xbox edition doesn't mean it won't work anywhere else. It's just got a little green band, you know, and an Xbox sticker. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal when it comes to the Snapdragon X Elite chips that are supposed to be coming to Windows sometime soon. We now have ideas of who the third party companies who are gonna be releasing the laptops are. And it's one of the largest companies in the world. Lenovo got their Snapdragon X Elite laptop leaked it looks like it's a 14 inch slim yoga that they produce and it looks like they're going to support it i've heard reports that it's going to happen very soon so keep your eyes out for potentially buying one of those and reviews dropping everywhere but a review you likely won't see is intel's upcoming 500 watt cpu simply because most people won't get their hands on them but details are coming out about the granite rapids xeon 6 processor that's going to have 288 cores and consume 500 watts of power. This is coming after a rebrand where uh, Intel used to call their Xeon lineup Xeon Scalable something or another, and now they've simplified it to Xeon 6, which is good. This is definitely a better naming, but I, I really, I, I'm so viscerally upset with their Core 200 Ultra and the way that they've changed the name of even this. You think this is called the Intel i9-14900KS processor? No, it's called the Intel Core i9 processor 14900KS. Look it up. Processor comes before the actual chip number. I don't 
Who's doing that? Why are you doing that, Intel? Anyways, this 500 watt chip is gonna be going in a beefy socket. And there are leaked pictures of those sockets for Beach Nut City and Avenue City, as well as the LGA 7529 and LGA 4710 chips, which are just, again, huge behemoth honk and wonkin' chompers. The highest end Xeon 6 with 288 cores is gonna have 288 threads, 216 megabytes of cache, and consume 500 watts. But then you see all of these ones down here are gonna consume 500 500 watts as well even though they have fewer cores they're also going to be hyper threaded but they're also going to have higher clock speeds whereas the xeon 6 288 core one we don't know what the clock speed is going to be but when you go down to the 128 core one of the 6980p that goes to 3.2 gigahertz these things are going to suck so much power juice now we'll remind you of amd's side of all of this equation their highest end chip at the current moment is supposed to go up to 192 cores so in a similar fashion of them using the smaller cores like intel is to get it up to 288. AMD is trying to get up to 192, but 128 Zen 5 cores. So that's more comparable to the 6980p. So in terms of core count, Intel is going to have the upper hand with that. But in terms of wattage, AMD is also suckling a lot of juice from, from the power wall with their high-end 128 core, 256 thread chip consuming 360 watts of TDP. But then if you look at their 96 core, 192 watt 3D V-cache chip, that one consumes 400 watts. So Intel is definitely higher and they have more power juice that they're trying to draw. But also one of the things that Intel has definitely put on the roadmap is that they are working on trying to figure out how to cool 2000 watt chips. So they, they, they're not gonna stop at 500. You think this is the end? No, this is that we've got multiple steps left to come in because Intel is investing heavily in trying to figure out how data centers can cool 2000 watts per chip, doing things like reinventing 3D vapor chambers and the like. So get ready for more and more power because it looks like Moore's law is officially over. We just, instead of cramming transistors in the same density, we just, we just the chips get monstrosity seeingness huge. Speaking of monstrous, let's talk about your comments in yesterday's episode of Hot News. Over on Float Plane, we got Mark Spark saying, wow, bold move, mentioning emulators for the butt company consoles. Is this the end of UFD again? You're joking, you're joking, but uh, it is possible. I do worry, but however, at the same time, I'm like, do I, do I forego talking about something as long as I stay really far away from ever recommending it or seeming like I'm endorsing it and seriously just try to focus on the objective reality of it exists? Is this gonna screw us over? And the answer is yes, I just don't know when, but I also kind of I, I kind of like talking about it. And then over on YouTube, we got Alan saying, at least we know when we kill that robot the first time, the boss has a second phase. I didn't even think about that. And Katie saying 1.5, euro a year for an app store with allegedly only two apps doesn't make sense now they've explained that the reason they're doing that is because once they hit a million installs they have to pay apple 50 cents for every download that's happened even before the million so it's going to cost them money to become popular so if they put a paywall in front of it help hopefully that stops them from growing as rapidly but then also once they hit that threshold where they have to start paying apple regardless of if it's free uh, that means that they're financially taken care of additionally the charging for it is going to get a little weird and there's already a little bit of uh trickiness when it comes to having the third-party app store while delta which is the emulator that launched alongside the third-party app store is available in the u.s on Apple's App Store over in the EU, it's only available on this third party App Store. So we're already seeing like some weird divergence of how things are gonna be available. And I don't know if that's gonna easily get resolved, but that's, it's it's a complicated situation. And we got Connection saying, just upgraded my 2080 tie to a 7900 X sticks. That's great. I'm, that's that's a good upgrade. I'm happy for you. Did you get the deal, the 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 one that we had on UFD deals earlier this week? Because that, that was a solid one. And Bruno saying the main issue with discontinuing the 6000 line is AMD has no budget 7000 SKU. There's no 7400 or 7500 XT. What are people supposed to do in case they can't buy or don't want a 7600? They don't care. 
that's that's essentially where we're at. Integrated graphics is getting way better. Nvidia is not releasing a bunch of GPUs below a 4060. You can get a 4050 on a laptop, but they're not making enough money. The margins aren't there. Even on the CPU side, like where is the Ryzen 3 7100? We're just not getting them because for them to sell a hundred dollar chip, they're making less profit. So if they don't release those, well, then they don't have to take the lower margins on those products. And I, it, it's it's a little frustrating. I. I, I wish there was more budget options. Then Nate saying, I grabbed a 6950 XT right around the time it dropped in price and even found an open box unit for 525. My secondary PC is running on a 2070 Super, so I might start planning out an upgrade path for that one when the RX 8000 series launches. Very nice. And then we'll end with Jeffrey Parker saying, just came here to say that I got some rare brew coffee and it is great. Thank you. I hope you enjoy brewing the rare brew coffee. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's good coffee. We like it for a good cause. I appreciate everybody who's shown their support for that. And I'm done supporting this episode of Hot News. It's over. I'll see you back here on Monday for more of the Hot Tech News.